if you had a choice, would you go with option number one or option number two? Personally, I'd go with option number two and here's why. As you can see from that video, both of these wounding mechanisms looks potentially life-threatening and associated with significant hemorrhage. Among the sickest of trauma patients who arrive and go into a traumatic full arrest or traumatic cardiac arrest, there are a few key variables that will determine survivability. One of the most important determinants or variables for survivability following a resuscitative thoracotomy really is the mechanism of injury. We know that following blunt mechanisms of injury for patients who arrive without vital signs, the likelihood of survival following resuscitative or ER thoracotomy is approximately 1% or less. Whereas for penetrating mechanisms, we know that survival is upwards of 8%. But there is a difference. Patients with stab wounds have a higher likelihood of survival versus patients with gunshot wounds, not surprisingly. Another key variable is the location of injury. For patients with penetrating mechanisms, for example, a gunshot wound or stab wound to the chest is gonna have higher survivability than patients with injuries to the abdomen versus patients who have multi-cavitary injuries. The third key variable, and again, we consider all of these variables before we open a patient's chest, is the presence or absence of signs of life. And again, signs of life differ from vital signs like you would get on a cardiac monitor, heart rate, respirate, blood pressure, SATs. When we talk about signs of life, really we're talking about basic organ function pupillary, reactivity, any evidence of cardiac activity, whether that's electrocardiographically or based on your ultrasound or any agonal respirations. When you put that all together, mechanism of injury, location of injury, as well as presence or absence of signs of life, it becomes quite apparent that if a patient comes in following a high-speed motor vehicle crash, so blunt polytrauma without signs of life, the likelihood of survival or recovery following resuscitative thoracotomy is less than 1% or almost zero. Whereas patients who come in with a stab wound to the chest, specifically to the heart with signs of life, these patients actually have a greater than 33% chance of survival, and many of these patients will have minimal to no significant neurological sequelae. For those of you interested in all things trauma, I would strongly encourage you to check out the EAST Practice Management Guidelines for Resuscitative Thoracotomy. Also check out the Western Trauma Association's Critical Decisions in Trauma, which was published back in 2012. I would also strongly encourage you to check out the 2000 paper by Dr. Rhee and colleagues published in the Journal of the American College of Surgeons, where they look back on 25 years of case series of resuscitative thoracotomy, and they do a great job further elaborating on those key variables that we discussed today regarding survivability following resuscitative thoracotomy. Be sure to like, share, comment, and follow for more.